On Christmas Eve, Fritz and Mary were looking forward to unpacking their presents. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It was their uncle with a bunch of gifts in his hands. The children were very happy to see him. Then they began to unpack the presents. Mary got fancy dolls, toy dishes, and a beautiful silk dress. Fritz also got what he wanted a magnificent horse and a mouse king. Mary noticed that there was a soldier under the tree. It was the nutcracker designed to neatly crunch hard nuts. The girl really liked it. But Fritz said it was his gift and tried to take it from his sister. The children stretched the nutcracker so far that they tore his arm off. The broken toy became unnecessary for the boy. Mary was very upset and burst into tears. But my uncle was able to repair the soldier. Cool. The girl was happy and hugged him gently. The day was very busy, so she soon got tired and fell asleep right under the tree. During her sleep, Mary heard strange sounds. They were like mouse fuss. The girl opened her eyes. The objects in the house seemed much larger than they were. And the tree under which she fell asleep became absolutely gigantic. Mary realized that it was not the objects that had increased, but that she had decreased. Suddenly, the mouse king with his army appeared before the eyes of the astonished girl. Mary was very frightened and wanted to run away. But the giant mice stopped her. And then a miracle happened the nutcracker jumped to his feet and grabbed the girl. They instantly climbed the tree to the bookshelf, and along it got to Fritz's toys. There was a whole collection of tin soldiers. The nutcracker called for help. The soldiers immediately jumped to their feet and ran after him. The nutcracker took command of the army, and the soldiers began to fight the army of the Mouse King. The battle between toys and mice was fierce. But, unfortunately, there were too many mice, and the Nutcracker army began to suffer defeat. Mary saw this and ran out of her hiding place. She threw her shoe at the Mouse King and hit him right in the head, and he fell to the floor unconscious. The rest of the mice realized that the battle was lost and ran away in all directions. Mary ran to the Nutcracker, but he lay unconscious, as he was badly wounded by the Mouse King. The girl thought that he was dead, and began to cry bitterly. And suddenly, a beautiful fairy appeared behind Mary. She decided to help the girl. With a wave of her wand, she revived the Nutcracker. With a second wave of her wand, the fairy turned the soldier into a handsome prince. Mary and Nutcracker looked at each other with loving eyes and could not take their eyes off. With a wave of her wand for the third time, the fairy took the couple in love to the kingdom of sweets. The trees there were made of candy, and the flowers were made of marmalade. It was a wonderful place. Mary closed her eyes for a second in pleasure. And suddenly, she heard the voice of her mother, who called her by name. Opening her eyes, the girl saw her mother, who looked at her in confusion. Mary also could not understand what was happening. The girl told about her wonderful journey, but her mother only smiled sweetly. Then Mary saw the pewter nutcracker in her arms. And then she realized that she had slept under the tree all night, and everything that happened to her was just a vivid dream. A few years later, the nephew of their godfather came to visit Mary and Fritz. As soon as he entered the house, the girl almost fell to the floor in surprise. The boy looked like the nutcracker as two drops of water. He also liked Mary at first sight. After some time, they got married and lived no worse than in the magic kingdom of sweets. Once upon a time there was a mother pig and her three piglets. Three brothers are the same height. Round, pink, with the same funny tails. All summer the pigs played in the green grass, basked in the sun, basked in the puddles. But then autumn came. One day my mother said that it was time for them to think about winter. She asked them to build a big house. The younger brother said that winter is still far away. The middle brother said that he would build his own house when needed. 
and the older brother decided to build the house himself. The younger and middle brothers did nothing but play their games. It got colder and colder every day. The younger brother decided to build a house out of straw. The middle brother thought it would be very cold in the thatched house in winter. He decided to build a house from twigs and twigs. By the evening their housing was ready. They were very proud of themselves and could not get enough of their buildings. Now they were free and could do whatever they wanted. They decided to go to their older brother and see what kind of house he had built for himself. The older brother was busy building. He applied stones, kneaded clay and slowly built himself a reliable, durable home. The younger brothers found their older brother at work. They were very surprised at what kind of fortress he was building. The elder brother calmly continued to work. The younger and middle brothers began to joke and laugh at his house. They were so amused that their screeching echoed far across the lawn. The elder brother asked to be quiet, because the wolf could hear them. The younger and middle brothers were amused even more. They decided that the older brother was just a coward. And the two brave brothers went for a walk. On the way, they sang and danced, and when they entered the forest, they made such a noise that they woke up the wolf who was sleeping under the pine tree. The disgruntled and hungry wolf went to the place where the screeching of two stupid pigs came from. The brothers walked merrily and talked about how easily they would deal with the wolf. And suddenly they saw a real living wolf. He was standing behind a large tree. He had very evil eyes and a huge toothy mouth. The brothers were so frightened that their thin tails trembled finally, finally. The wolf prepared to jump he snapped his teeth and blinked his right eye. The pigs suddenly came to their senses and, screeching across the forest, rushed to run away. Raising clouds of dust, they rushed each to his own house. The younger brother ran to his thatched hut and slammed the door in front of the wolf. The wolf growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brother, out of fear, could not utter a word. Then the wolf began to blow. The light roof instantly flew off the thatched hut. The wolf took a deep breath and blew a second time, and the thatch house flew in all directions. The wolf was delighted, snapped his teeth, and pounced on his younger brother. But the pig deftly dodged and ran. He ran to the house of the middle brother. The brothers managed to lock themselves up and looked at each other in dismay. The wolf got angry and began to blow. The house is slightly askew. The wolf blew a second, then a third, then a fourth time. But the house was still standing. The wolf took a deep breath and blew for the fifth time. The house shook and fell apart. Only one door stood for some time in the middle of the ruins. In horror, the piglets rushed to the house of their elder brother. The wolf ran after them. He was sure that this time the pigs would not run away from him. The piglets quickly rushed past the large apple tree without even hitting it. And the wolf did not have time to turn and hit the apple tree, which covered him with apples. One hard apple hit him between the eyes. A big bump jumped on the wolf's forehead. At this time, the younger and middle brothers managed to run into the house of the older brother and bolt the door. The wolf ran to the door, growled and demanded to open the door. The younger brothers were very scared and could not say anything in return. And the elder brother knew that he and his brothers had nothing to fear in a solid stone house. Then the wolf sucked in more air and blew as soon as he could. But no matter how much it blew, not a single stone moved. And then he looked up and noticed a large, wide chimney on the roof. He carefully climbed onto the roof and began to go down the pipe. The pigs heard a rustle. The elder brother immediately guessed what was the matter. He quickly rushed to the cauldron in which water was boiling and tore off the lid. The wolf went down the pipe and fell straight into the cauldron. His eyes widened to his forehead. The scalded wolf flew out with a wild roar and rushed into the forest. And the three little pigs looked after him and were glad that they had so cleverly taught the evil robber a lesson.
From that time on, the brothers and their mother began to live together, under one roof.